operation pipelines under the ocean, known as Operation Pluto. Undersea oil pipeline operation in World War II. Operation Pluto was a Second World War operation by British engineers, oil companies, and the British Armed Forces to construct undersea oil pipelines under the English Channel between England and France in support of Operation Overlord, the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944. Pipelines were considered necessary to relieve dependence on oil tankers, which could be slowed by bad weather, were vulnerable to German submarines, and were also needed in the Pacific War. The Battle of Normandy was won without a drop of fuel being delivered via the Pluto cross-channel pipelines. Only 8% of the fuel delivered to the Allied forces in Northwest Europe between D-Day and V-Day was via those pipelines, the rest being by tanker, either in bulk or in cans, or by airlift. The first type was the flexible A-pipe with a 3 inches diameter lead core, weighing around 55 long tons per nautical mile. The second type was a less flexible steel pipe of similar diameter, developed by engineers from the Iraq Petroleum Company and the Burma Oil Company, known as Hamel from the contraction of the two chief engineers, H. A. Hammock and B. J. Ellis. Because of the rigidity of the Hamel pipe, a special apparatus code named the conundrum was developed to lay the pipe. The first prototypes were tested in May 1942 across the River Medway, and in June in deep water across the Firth of Clyde using vertical triple round pumps manufactured by Tangy Pumps, Cornwell Works in Birmingham, with an operating capability of 1,500 pounds per inch to at 3,000 revolutions per minute, before going into production with the basic steel pipe for Hamel supplied by Stuart Samp. Lloyds of Corby, manufacturing of the final system was carried out by Siemens Brothers at Woolwich, Henley's at North Woolwich, Calendars at Erith, and Standard Telephones and Cables at Greenwich. Because of capacity limitations in the UK, some A pipeline was also manufactured in the United States. Both pipelines were completely successful, and Pluto was formally brought into the plans for the invasion of Europe. The Clyde trials showed that it was necessary to maintain an internal pressure of about 7 bars in the pipeline at all times, even during manufacture. A number of merchant ships were converted to pipe laying by stripping the interiors, and building in large cylindrical steel tanks, fitting special hauling gear and suitable sheaves and guides. Full-scale production of the 2-inch pipe was started on 14 August 1942, using steel from the now near-defunct Corby Steel Works, and six weeks later, on 30 October, a 30 miles length was loaded on board HMS Holdfast under the command of Commander Tribby Hilo B.E. R.N.R., which was to be used as a full-scale rehearsal of Operation Pluto. Two further ships were equipped with handling gear, these being HMS Sancroft and HMS Latimer, both of which could handle 100 miles, of 3-inch pipe weighing approximately 6,000 tons. These sites were obtained and equipped with tubular steel bridges with overhead, hauling gear, erected in such a position that the pipe could be taken, from a ship's tanks. After full-scale testing of an 83 km A-pipe across the Bristol Channel between Swansea in Wales and Watermouth, in North Devon, the first line to France was laid on 12 August 1944, over the 130 km from Shanklin, China on the Isle of Wight across the English Channel, to Cherbourg. A further A-pipe and two Hamels followed, but one of these again failed before, coming into operation. The Pluto pipelines were linked to pump stations on the English coast, housed in various inconspicuous buildings, including cottages and garages. In England, the Pluto pipelines were supplied by a 1,600 km network of pipelines to transport fuel from ports, including Liverpool and Bristol. In Europe, the pipelines were extended as the troops moved forward, and eventually reached as far as the Rhine. The initial performance of the Pluto pipeline was disappointing. In total, over 7,81,000 cubic meters of petrol were pumped to the Allied forces in Europe providing a critical supply of fuel until a more permanent arrangement was made, although the pipeline remained in operation for some time after. The official history states of the cross-channel pipelines that Pluto contributed nothing to Allied supplies at a time that would have been most valuable and Dumbo was more valuable, 
but at a time when success was of less importance. The route of the pipeline can be traced in various places, on Romney Marsh, where the pipeline crossed water drainage, ditches it ran above ground in a concrete case. The pipelines are also the forerunners of all flexible pipes, used in the development of offshore oil fields. More than 90% of the pipeline was recovered as salvage, and subsequently scrapped. While the pipeline itself is no longer in use, many of the buildings that were constructed or utilized, to disguise it remain in operation today, especially on the Isle of Wight, where the former pumping station at Sandown, is currently in use as a mini-golf facility. In 1994, the Midland Bank sponsored a black and white film which contained, a remarkable amount of historical archive film showing, the entire history and construction, of the Pluto project, the A-pipe, and the conundrum reels. When the landing site for the invasion was switched, from Calais to Normandy, the pipeline needed to be increased, from its original length to around 70 miles, and the film tells of how the American pipeline industry, became involved in producing the extra amount of a pipe. 